Hey, what's going on, guys? I know it's been a long time since I made a broadcast about the news, but I figured we might as well just jump into it and see what's been going on lately. I've been gone for roughly about two weeks, maybe three. Um, a lot of my subscribers, I made a video earlier talking about I'm sorry for being MIA, and again, I do apologize. Um, just haven't had the time to do to do this kind of stuff. This um, research and all that other stuff, it takes a lot of time to do. Um, so anyways, if you've been watching a lot of my videos, some of you guys will already know what I'm talking about. If not, I can urge you, or I do urge you to please go back and look at my videos. Um, and you'll kind of see where I'm coming from with this video. We're going to talk about Syria, and we're going to talk about the Philippines. Um, these are two of the biggest things that I know that's going on right now in the world, other than North Korea, but that's been kind of silent. Um, last thing I heard of North Korea is something about last week they they were threatening to nuke New York City or something like that. And I mean, honestly, everyone's going to sit there and be like, "Oh, that'll never happen." You know, you know, they don't even have the technology. Well, they got the technology for a close range. Don't forget, Russia was on the borders of the United States East Coast three months ago, thirty miles from Delaware. And Russia is now new friends with North Korea. Um. And I'm not saying nothing. I mean, there's no information, no facts to back that whole thing up. It's just, just a theory. Alright, so anyways, let's get into the Philippines. You guys, as most of you guys know, that the Philippines has been having a little bit of an issue as of recently with ISIS. Um, on the island of Medellin, you know, Marwa City. You know, they've been going at it for about a month now. Alright, so anyways, I'm going to go ahead and... You know, read a couple of the facts. And again, like always, I'll post the article in the description. You guys can click click the links, go read it yourself. And um, I'm just I'm just gonna let you guys know a little bit about what's going on. Alright, so anyways, um for almost a month now the battles between Islamic groups and the army of the Philippines inside Marawa City, according to officials, the death toll has passed over three hundred people. 225 militants, 59 soldiers, and 26 civilians have died within the last month. Okay. Um. Give me one second. I'm sorry. I, 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 there's just so much going on. I've got to write stuff down. Um. Anyways, as of yesterday, or earlier this morning, ISIS-linked militants stormed a school, and they took hostages in the southern Philippines village. Um. They held hostages in a school with 31 people inside, and 12 of them were children. It's crazy. Um, they left. You know, thank God no one was hurt. Um, thank God no, yeah, no one was hurt, not even the children. Thank you. Um, but anyways, about 5 a.m. Philippine time, you gotta think they're roughly about 12 hours ahead of us. Maybe 10, maybe 8 hours ahead. Um... About 5 a.m. Wednesday morning over there, nearly 300 armed men entered the village, which is a Christian Muslim village. About 50 of them took up arms in the school and took the hostages. Um, Rodrigo Derrucha, he's warning of a full-scale civil war if the ongoing violence spills into another part of the island. So you have pretty much everything that's going on with, um, he's having a war in his own country on drugs, you know, and now he has to deal with ISIS, and of course the United States being involved with ISIS and all this, United States, from what I understand, has started sending military help to the Philippines, and Rodrigo, he's kind of on the fence about it, he doesn't know how to feel, he doesn't know if it's you know, if he's okay with it, I, so, I mean, just be on the eye for that, you know, Philippines are going crazy right now, um, a lot of people are dying, there's a lot of battles going on, like I said, it's been going on for about a month now, and it all started with that failed raid in April, and, um, all the sleeper cells within the Muslim community starting to wake up, and they're starting to fight back, so they're starting to put a stronghold, and in one of my recent videos, I brought tips and information out to you guys that, you know, that there is, in fact, large um, resource depots 
in the Philippines that the United States has hid from the Philippine government, you know, um, you know, conspiracy theories, you know, people will say that ISIS was created by America, um, because, you know, we want to go over there and do regime changes, we want to control everything, you know, but we want to keep the United States name not tarnished, so why not make some thugs and have them do our dirty work for us, I'm not saying it's true, I mean, it's just, it's just a theory, um, alright, so anyways, let's get into Syria, I don't know if, I know a lot of you guys do pay attention to what's been going on, um, as of Sunday, there was a Syria airplane that got shot down out of the sky by United States forces, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm so out of loop, I cannot remember this stuff. I have to sit here and, um, do a 60 keep it. My notes are all just messed up right now. Alright, so there was a drone that was shot down yesterday. Oh, that makes the second one in a week, and that, that drone was Iranian. I told you guys that I, Iran was getting ready to come into Syria, and was getting ready to be a player. Um, there was a drone flying towards Al Tanif, which if you guys remember, in a, a video about a month ago, I brought out that the United States has a major military buildup on the border of uh, Syria, Iraq, and Jordan, and that's where their base is, where they're training all the, uh, rebel forces that's fighting against Baal al Shab and the pro-Syrian government. Um... So there was a drone that was flying towards that base and the United States F-15 fighter jet shot it down. The United States is saying that the, the drone was armed with uh, rockets and ammunition and it poses posed a threat to the United States ground forces. Um, so anyways, um, Alright, let, let's get back to Sunday. I know I'm all over the place on this. I'm sorry, guys. Sunday, the U.S. forces shot down a Syrian jet that was bombing an ISIS stronghold po positions near Raqqa in eastern Syria. The, um, and anyways, what happened was no one, has, no one knows if the pilot's alive or dead. That happened Sunday and they still haven't found him. The pilot from the plane ejected from the plane above the ISIS-controlled territory, and he is still missing. Um, I, I hate to say it, but I mean, like, if you're over there bombing against ISIS, and you're on one of these planes, and you eject over one of their strongholds, over one of their territories, more likely, they capture you. I can only hope he's still alive, but I, I don't know. There's nothing saying that they haven't found him yet. So again, that's um, that's up to speculation as to what's going on. Again, we can only hope that he's okay. But like I said, you you eject from your plane over enemy territories behind enemy lines, and you haven't been found yet, haven't made contact with your government. I, I hate to say. It. So, anyways, after that happened, Russia. Russia military has halted sky incident prevention interactions with the U.S. as of June 19th. So basically what that means is they they pretty much cut all ties with the United States. Um, you know, there was communication back and forth between the militaries, you know, the United States and Russia, you know, saying that, you know, hey, the United States is flying over this way, be on the lookout, that's just us up there. Or Russia saying, hey, you know, we're flying this way, be on the lookout for us. After that, Russia suspended everything. No longer, they don't want nothing to do with America after that. You know, they kind of look at it as, a, as like an act of war. Um, aggression towards the Syrian government. And Russia's back. He's, you know, Russia's, Vladimir Putin and Russia, they're backing Syria, uh, Baal al Shah over in Syria. You, you know that's happening. Um, so they've sat there and pretty much disbanded the whole uh, agreement that they had communicating was. Russia is saying that America failed to even communicate them on that act. That they weren't, they didn't know. Um, 
So, anyways, Sean Spicer, Speaker of the House, he came out Monday and he told reporters Monday, and I want to quote him. It's important, crucial, and critical that we keep lines of communication open to deconflict potential issues. So, basically what he's saying is, I mean, you guys should know what he's saying, you know, is they don't want to stop the communication because they don't want to, they don't want to accidentally kill one of their own people. But also at the same time, it's also being stated in the same article that the United States has every right to um, defend itself. I'm so all over the place. All right. Here we go. I'll just I'll just start here. Um, the U.S. air movement will be tracked by Russia in calls for the shooting of a Syrian plane. A military aggression against Syria. They will be watching every aircraft, every missile, everything that flies west of the Euphrates River. From now on, they will be keeping an eye on America. Uh, the pilot of the plane ejected from the plane. We've already talked about that. The U.S. seeks to keep communication with Russia over Syria. The U.S. to keep open comms with Russia, but retains the right to self-defend. So, I don't know if they were feeling threatened from the Syrian um, aircraft. You know, I do know that America's been over there trying to deal with ISIS. Um, but also, at the same time, they've been building up forces against the border. Um, we all know that America wants to overthrow Syria. So maybe that's just some propaganda. Sitting there saying that, you know, we have the right to defend ourselves, but in reality, you was never threatened. Or it's just what it was called, an, an aggression act of war. Um, I'm just wondering how many more times can America get away with this before they get told to shut the fuck up. Pretty much in a nutshell. Um, anyways... I'm going to hop off here. That's just a little bit of what's been going on. Um, again, like I said, yesterday, United States Coalition Forces shot down the drone. An Iranian drone. It's the second one this week. So, I, I, I said it weeks ago, guys. Iran, Iranian. Iran's getting ready to become a player into the game. So, that's another thing to keep an eye out on. You know, you have so many different factions, so many different forces going on over there. You know, U.S.-led coalition forces. You have the Kurds, you have the Turks, you have um, ISIS. You have now Iran and Hezbollah is coming into play. And I told you guys to be to be on the lookout for that because it's, it's setting up. It really is. Everything's setting up into place. And it's just going to be, you know, imagine a bottle. You know, we're slowly filling it up and it's getting to that bottleneck to where so much is going to be going on at the same time that it's just going to take that one false move for shit to blow up. So, guys, be safe. All right, pay attention to the news. Educate yourself. Please stay away from mainstream media. There's two sides to every story. You're only hearing one. Go find out the other. It's the only way you're going to be happy. All right, guys. Later.